You know what? Let's do it a little bit different today. All right, so this is a laser review, which you probably saw from the title and thumbnail. But let's break it down into a couple different parts to make it a little bit more manageable and to make sure that everything that needs to get said, gets said. So one, general info about the machine. Two, my honest take on the machine. Three, is the WeCreate Vision Pro perfect? Where you know the answer is gonna be no, but here why. Four, who is this machine actually for? And five, final thoughts and wrap up. So that should help round up everything that has to be said about this machine and help you make a decision of whether or not this one is the right one for you. So within a very short period of time, WeCreate has kind of solidified their space in the prosumer hobby laser market. This is their fourth laser already within about two and a half years. First starting out with the 20 watt WeCreate Vision, then the 40 watt Vision, then the 10 watt Vista, really aimed at crafters and the smaller hobby market. And then now finally there, we create 45 watt Vision Pro. This laser sports a 45 watt diode laser with beam focus technology that they say is on par with a 60 watt diode laser, kind of like Creality's 60 watt Falcon. Now I've never used the 60 watt Falcon, so I can't really measure that capability in that comparison but that is what they are putting out in their marketing material in terms of the power of this laser, even though it's 45 watts. The beam is a 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 focus dot that allows you to do some really good cutting, but also some decently fine engraving as well, especially for having a higher power laser, which usually lose the fine engraving capability when you go up in laser power. But their beam focus technology also allows for better cutting which is why their marketing material says they could cut up to 25 millimeter softwoods and up to 18 millimeter hardwood. Their speed improvement is up about 39% over their previous laser, topping out around 600 millimeters per second under optimal conditions. One of the biggest changes with the WeCreate 45 watt Vision Pro, I know it's a mouthful, has to do with the size. The interior laser area has really been expanded and you can put materials up to about 22.83 inches by 15.75 inches. Now that is just the interior space. The work area, however, has also been increased and that work area now sits between about 19.7 by 12.6 inches. So the work area has been increased, but also the interior area of the laser has been increased to put larger pieces of goods inside the laser. And here's how that compares to the previous 40 watt and some other lasers that are within about the same market as the WeCreate. WeCreate's auto lift system has also been increased in its robustness and now supports about 100,000 lift cycle life for the laser. I really don't know what the typical lifespan for one of these lasers are because they've only been out for a couple years, but 100,000 seems like quite a bit. As far as the failure point on this machine, I don't think that lifting mechanism in terms of that lifespan would be one of them but I'm glad that they're looking at the different life cycles and trying to increase the capabilities and quality of their internal components. For anybody that's been tracking WeCreate, either you already have one of their lasers or you've been looking at their marketing material, will think, well, they already have the 40 watt, why do they need the 45 watt? And initial comparison of the two lasers doesn't look like it's actually much different other than the size. The 40 watt has this bluish tint and the 45 watt has a sleeker dark gray tint. A cursory inspection on the inside also tells me that things look like they are a little bit more buttoned up, a little bit more polished, and the inclusion of some additional things like a tack switch for the lid that you can actually hear when you open and close the lid. They've definitely upped the engineering of this machine and it looks to be a more solid entry even over the 40 watt, which I reviewed and thought was pretty good as is, but this is definitely an improvement. So here's my take on the machine. First of all, it's more important to me that everybody that watches the video knows and can trust that what I'm saying is my honest opinion, not influenced by anybody else. WeCreate's goal is to sell as many lasers as possible and build up their user base. My goal, however, is to have all of you keep coming back to my channel and hopefully trust that what I'm telling you is at least as honest as I can make it based on my experience with the machine, which is only about a month up to this point. The WeCreate 45 watt Vision Pro is probably one of the most user-friendly lasers on the market. 
it took almost no more than 30 minutes to set it up given I have set quite a few of these up before, but there wasn't a whole lot to it. It was almost so easy that it's almost not even worth showing. You take it out, take out the packing material, plug it in, connect the exhaust hose, run, run your software. It's pretty much that simple. There's no complicated assembly. You don't have to attach the laser head. You don't have to balance anything. You don't have to focus any mirrors. It's take out the box, take out the packing material and plug it in. It's pretty much that simple. And for a huge number of people that just want to make stuff, it's a pretty big win. Next up, this machine is a significant upgrade over the 40 watt. Even though the listed difference is only a five watt difference, the machine is built better, it has better parts, and it has a more powerful laser. It is a significant upgrade, even though it doesn't look that way on the outside. The machine also feels faster and it feels more like a real prosumer machine. And to be clear, what I mean by a prosumer is it's not a professional machine, but it gets to the upper level of the hobbyist where you can actually start doing small production runs and launch a small business using this machine. Over the month that I've had the machine, I've run quite a few tests and I wanna share some of those tests with you now. I don't like doing big extravagant projects for this. I like running a lot of the typical things I would use to run and test a machine to gauge whether or not that I wanna use it in the future. And a lot of that is doing simple engraving, doing some box making to see how accurate the kerf is, and also testing out some of the capabilities of the camera. So here is what I did. One of the biggest adjustments with using this laser is the power. Because it is a more powerful laser at 45 watts, the power should be turned way down. Otherwise, you're gonna kind of overshoot your target for what you're trying to engrave. And their presets, I don't think, are completely accurate as of right now with the Pro. So turning the power down, I got better results. And this PU leather engraved really nicely, although probably a little bit too deep still. But the quality came out pretty good. And I have some other examples of engraving here. This is an old photo that still probably needs some better preparation, but it engraved pretty well. But because of the power of the laser, it is vaporizing a lot of the material as opposed to depositing a dark mark you might see on some lower powered lasers. From an old photo, not too bad on some MDF. A little bit smoky, and I'll address some of this a little bit later. Nice little robot, nicely engraved into the surface. Gives a little bit more of a, a dimensional look. One more example of engraving this artistic interpretation of Dr. Doom. Same quality of engraving into the surface. I'm just gonna zoom in and get a little bit of a better view of this. So with a higher power laser, you might have trouble getting a darker mark without having some sort of additional agent on here to darken the wood. But the quality is there. I just, a lot of power as well. And I also tried doing something different with engraving some slate. I actually ran this twice just to see how it could do with the detail. And with that 0 0.08 dot size, we're able to get quite a bit of detail even on slate, which typically is kind of like a two-tone type of material. I tried doing some extra image prep here to get some better detail. And you can see some of it kind of come through on the, the fur. And his boot right there captured quite a bit. I also cut out a box on the laser. I always like to check out the kerf, and the kerf, for anybody that does not know, it has to do with the amount of material that is removed when you cut through something. And the kerf for this laser is a 0 0.08 by 0 0.08, and you're gonna lose that much material when you cut. Which, by comparison, like on a standard table saw, it's about an eighth of an inch of material. So a laser kerf is very, very thin. And when you do a box joint like this, it's important to have really good accuracy for those joints to fit together. And I see basically zero gap in between those fingers there, which means that the accuracy of the laser and my file that I input were pretty good. That covers a lot of the basic tests I usually do. And it did exactly as I would expect, but I mean, it's a pretty powerful laser. It cut really fast, which is always a benefit and the one item to kind of be aware of is the engraving. Not that it doesn't engrave well, but it's so powerful that it will remove a lot more material than you might expect. 
and I might have to do an additional test where I do a borax wash to get those darker values that we really want to show up. But the image is there, it's clear, and does have the detail. It just doesn't have the darkening that you might expect. Similar to what you might see on a CO2 laser, actually. It's very, very similar. Okay, so now for some more honesty. And the question might seem a little bit weird because nothing is ever perfect, right? But the question I have, this for the section is, well, is the WeCreate 45 Watt Vision Pro perfect? No, no laser is. What you really wanna be looking for is, does it check all the boxes for you? And we'll look at that a little bit closer in a few moments. So here are a couple items that I think that you should be aware of before even considering purchasing this laser. The laser for the most part does a pretty good job in keeping fumes contained. It isn't perfect. In fact, I think the exhaust fan is a little bit underpowered, but unfortunately, that's kind of the case with every laser in this category. So I still recommend getting an external exhaust or a standalone filtration system, and it's gonna make your experience that much better. There does get to be a lot of smoke residue inside, just like any other laser that needs to be cleaned. So don't have your expectation too high on that. It does do a decent job if you don't have anything else. If you're planning on using this in any area other than a garage that has a vent directly to the outside, please get an additional exhaust fan and or filtration system. Second, and this is only a symptom of the software and the system right now, is that I don't think that the presets within the Make It software are calibrated or set up correctly for the 45 watt Vision Pro. I think it's miscalibrated. I think that the powers for the different feeds and speeds are too high. I'd have lowered those quite a bit to get good results out of the machine, but that's something that you'll learn with time and every machine is going to be a little bit different. But I think that if they're gonna have those presets built in, they should be they should be calibrated a little bit better for the current machine, especially for people getting this and using this for the first time. They're gonna get some results that are way off. Next up is that you know this machine is actually pretty loud. The exhaust fan runs pretty high and fast because it needs to, but it makes a lot of noise. It's not wrong, it's just it's a little bit of an inconvenience. In addition, there's very few controls in the software that allow you to modify the fan speed, which I understand why, uh, to turn on and off, but also for the air assist. The air assist seems to always be running when it shouldn't be. The air assist really should only be running when you're doing cutting, but it was also running when I was engraving, and that can actually change the quality of your engrave. So I think that they should leave that setting in under settings, they can leave it on by default, but for people that have been using these for a while and know the difference, should have the ability to turn it on and off. In addition, they do not have bilateral engraving enabled. And if you're not familiar with that term, that means that you're able to engrave going one way and then going back the other way. So you're engraving basically twice per revolution of the laser head going back and forth. And as of right now, they only have unilateral, so it only engraves one way moves down, goes back to the original position, and then graves again. I did talk to WeCreate about this. They said that it does not impact the speed, but could also increase the quality of the engraving. I'm not sure I agree with WeCreate on that. And once again, I wish they would just leave it as a setting in their software and allow me to actually make that choice and figure that out instead of disabling it altogether. I'm pretty sure that it's not the case. So who's this machine for? If what I'm about to say falls in line with anything that you're looking for in a laser, then I would actually recommend checking this one out and possibly consider uh, purchasing it. If you're in need of a laser that has a really good cutting capability at a decent speed, then this is a decent choice. Especially with a 45 watt laser, you're gonna be cutting through a lot of material pretty quickly. Most material that I use is only three millimeter or eighth inch material, which kind of is the standard, but I could easily go up to, and probably will for some products I have coming up, go up to quarter inch, you could even do half inch. Although anything beyond that, I don't think lasers are really that great of an option for that um, under those circumstances. If you need an all-in-one solution with limited space, this is also another good option. You don't have to purchase another separate riser. You pretty much know the exact space that your laser is gonna need although you have the ability to expand it to an IR laser 
and also add on a conveyor. And also has a built-in system for mounting the rotary where you can do tumblers and anything of a cylindrical nature. And on a side note, a huge part of my side business with my wife is doing tumblers. In fact, not too long ago, we just finished a 250 tumbler order. And the Wii Crate is a great option for doing that because you have a consistent mount to run over and over again. And the software has actually gotten a lot better to process those designs as well. If you need and want an interface that is quick and simple to use, we create to make it software, makes it even easier, especially interfacing with a more powerful laser like this. That is not always the case. Lightburn is a fantastic piece of software, but it's intimidating to a lot of people. It has a lot of features that people will never use. But if you're just starting out, you can't go wrong with some simplified software like we create to make it. And of course, interfaces with this laser. If you want a prosumer laser at a competitive price, that is also another reason to look at this laser here. And last, if you're interested in doing crafting and small scale production, but you're gonna need to do a lot of cutting in the process, you want a powerful laser to do that. Not just to get through all the material, but to do it in a reasonable amount of time so you could process more and hopefully bring in bigger profits. So if you're looking at any of those things, you're looking to launch a small business, you're trying to take a step forward to try to make more things for yourself and or friends and family and hopefully make a little bit of money off of it on the side, check out WeCrate. It might be just what you're looking for. If you made it this far in the video, once again, like I always say, I want to thank you for your time and your eyeballs. It means a lot. It kind of helps you keep going to make these videos and continue doing reviews. And ultimately, I hope that you find what you're looking for. Regardless of any of the laser companies I've worked with, what I want is for you to get what you need out of your desire to make and to craft and to build. So I hope the information has been useful. If you have any questions, please make sure that you list them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Hopefully I addressed most of what you would want to know about these lasers. Um, but like I said, let me know if there's anything else that comes to mind that you'd like to see me address. I have a couple other videos in production right now to take a look at the IR module and also the Rotary Pro for the We Create 45 Watt Vision Pro. And that should also further demonstrate the capability of the machine and why it might be something you're interested in picking up for your home and or shop. If you'd like to get a little bit more information or even help possibly support the channel, if you're financially able to do so, go ahead and check out patreon.com. We have a pretty good collection of people there that all seem to be into lasers and laser engraving and such. And there's also files for you to download and use if you're one of the paid members. Um, you can also join as a free member. And if you want those files, there is a small fee to gain access to those. Also, go ahead and check out our back catalog of videos. We have a lot of stuff that uh, you might find interesting. So go ahead and check those videos out as well. In the meantime, don't forget to design, make, and play. And I will see you soon. Take care.